I woke up feeling like everything was numb but my vagina. Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Larissa, AKA Colors. And today I'm gonna be talking about my hysteroscopy, hysteroscopy. I don't know how to say it, so don't judge me. I had recently got my hysteroscopy done January 5th. My neighbors just got home and I don't know if they can hear me. <laughs> so weird. Why? 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 Anyway, on December 29th, I had my pre-op appointment. I had some paperwork, signed contract. It told me what to expect. Also, I had a test to see if I ovulated that month. So to give a small background, I had a extremely long period. I didn't know why, but I always had irregular periods, but this one has been extremely long. So at the time of the pre-op appointment, I was on my cycle for roughly 18 days. So she still wanted to see if I ovulated. I really don't know what the results was from that test, but I was there for like 30 minutes or something like that. When it came to my actual surgery, so from the time of my pre-op to the week later in between that time i received a letter basically stating don't take these medications within the next week they also told me what my surgery time was and that i had to be there an hour prior so leading up to the procedure i wasn't nervous i didn't really feel a type of way i actually was kind of anxious for it to happen because I've been wanting a kid for a long time and for the first time I'm getting somewhere. So I get there, they had me confirm who I was and then I just sat down. I probably sat down all of like 15 minutes before one of the nurses called me back to confirm why I was here, what tests I was having done. She checked my blood pressure, pretty much general questions that you get at every doctor's appointment. She told me that I had to go into the next room, which I followed her to, and they had me change from waist down. Had to put on a gown and a drape. Now, the weird thing about my situation is my period was still on. So most people say that in their videos that you can't have this done during the saline sonogram and during the hysteroscopy, but I did. I was still bleeding, and at the time, I think it was for roughly about a month. So I was already bleeding, so they had to put a pad thing that they usually put under people who wet the bed in the hospitals and things so they put one of that under me I had to sit there without a tampon without anything on because obviously they was about to cut something out so I didn't explain this the reason for my hysteroscopy is they had suspected that I had some polyps and some extra tissue because in my saline sonogram they seen like a thick tissue at my uterine wall that was kind of like floating so when she squirt the saline in there it was moving but it was like attached to a wall so we seen that pop up so I'm sitting there I'm with my husband David David kind of filming trying to be discreet also at this time they put an IV in me and I was just sitting there for all the 30 minutes my appointment was at 10 o'clock, I was there at 9. At this point in time, I didn't really feel the type of way. The anesthesiologist came in, talked to me about I felt comfortable, so on and so forth. After that, my doctor came in, my doctor kind of gave me the, you ready? And I was like, yeah, but I feel a little awkward because my vagina's up, pretty much. So I had to legit walk with the gown on, wrapped around me, walked to another room <laughs> where they had, which was kind of a little bit intimidating because they had assistants, I'm gonna just call them assistants because I don't know what they are, in which the procedure was gonna be done. I remember being intimidated because it was just a small room. I don't know why I expected it to be a lot bigger, probably a little bit bigger than this room. It looked nice, but it wasn't that big. I'm laying in bed, I see the big old light shining. <sighs> So I gotta put my legs up here, spread them out now. Because they had the little sterile, it was like really high up in the air. So they had that, they told me to lay down, I put my legs up, but these kind of cuff under my thighs instead of my feet, if that makes sense. So I had my thighs open, but they've draped 
my vagina. The anesthesiologist, real cool. He asked me about work at, he asked me what I do, he asked me what I'm into, and we're all kind of starting a conversation about it. But he's asking all those questions. At the same time, he's ejecting medicine to prevent me from getting sick when I wake up. I'm already tired. And this wasn't even the anesthesia medicine. Hey, I must be really tired. The last thing I remember saying was something about my age and we're laughing and then done out of there it took probably all of three minutes if that can you imagine me talking telling you like yeah i work here you know everything's good this and that he's medicine medication I was like yeah oh i couldn't imagine this i'm out i never even seen my doctor come in the room or the only thing i remember was me waking up in a different room in a chair wrapped up with a blanket and i had a heating pad over my stomach hey clarissa i woke up i remember feeling like everything was numb but my vagina i know my vagina was numb but it was this is gonna be tmi and i'm talking to those who probably married or in a serious relationship if you had smashed <laughs> I was gonna make it sound nice, whatever. Had sex with your partner multiple times. In a short time frame, your vagina starts to get a little sore. So it kind of felt like that. Like, but on top of that, I felt bloating. Now, in my case, compared to other people, they were up, they were good, they were ready to go. Even my doctor told me like, oh, you got no downtime, you have nothing to worry about. But in my case, I kind of felt like, mm, don't move me please don't move me it wasn't excruciating it was bearable some other girls probably felt because in my cases of my cycle even though my cycles are regular in their prolonged cycles i don't cramp i only blow it felt like bloating on top of minor cramp in a sore vagina that might sound like a lot so she asked me if i wanted pain medicine yeah <laughs> so she prescribed me hydrocodone they asked me if i wanted a wheelchair now i am one of those people that tend to get a little bit sicker than normal people but yeah so i couldn't really walk the medication that they had me on was pretty strong so they wheeled me out i was so tired yeah it was pretty bad i'm not gonna even lie i was just really weak at the time so just need help getting the car i get home and i am extremely tired i had to go get the hydrocodone which if you haven't had hydrocodone before which i had never till up until this point it makes you go to sleep it that's what it does it makes you go to sleep it makes you tired it makes you pretty weak and to sleep off i guess whatever you just went through so i got home i was tired i think i had a minor headache but that first day was pretty smooth because because you really can't feel nothing you're still on the hospital's uh medication on top of the medication you just got because that isn't guaranteed so first night was good second night was was okay i just felt the bloating and the cramping but I was still taking the hydrocodone, so it wasn't too bad. Third day was my work. I was so sick, like throwing up, headaches, couldn't sleep. I don't know if it was because of that, but that's what happened. We're talking about my experience. I tried to sleep, nothing was working. I was trying not to take the hydrocodone. I really just didn't want to take it that day. So the fourth day, I was sick. Oh, I lost my voice the second day i don't know why i got my voice back like four days later i started to feel a little bit better so i didn't take the hydrocodone i started back work that tuesday i was really weak i was feeling better in the sense of the bloating was starting to come down a little bit my headaches were starting to go away but i was still weak to do the type job that i do so i left work i should have left work a lot but that's just for energy sakes so let me give you an update as to what's going on now. She did tell me that my test results for the um, polyp was benign. She also did tell me that I had, my uterus is kind of shaped like a heart. On the outside it's shaped normally, but in the inside it kind of looked heart shaped. And she was a little bit confused about that. So I have a test that's coming up. I will be posting a video on that. But yeah. Um, so I have a test come up for that. She did check my uterus at the time of my post-op. She said I can start having sex, but I had to have protective sex due to an uh, appointment that I had coming up. So I can't start trying to conceive as yet. She's not really sure how to move forward because she don't know the shape of my uterus. As far as the healing process, 
my vagina stopped hurting probably at, on the fourth day. It, I didn't really have no problems, but I am still bleeding. Well, I didn't see no blood today. It's hard to tell if it was from the surgery. So the plan is to see if I get a regular period and then once my next first day of my period comes up, that's when I'ma schedule the test. So right now it's just a waiting game. And yeah, sorry if this video is so long because I want it to be as detailed as possible. A lot of the YouTube videos that I see when it comes to trying to conceive and no shade, no nothing like that, but a lot of them are old YouTubers that already been through the process have conceived we want to see if there's any updated information if somebody experienced something new i'm hoping that at least a couple of people will appreciate the information i'm giving because this is going to be a whole series on my channel on me trying to conceive vlog challenges i'm really new into the youtube world so please help me grow and we grow together and Let's see where this channel goes. So thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.